Uh, these are numbers we hear a lot as well, that uh, Americans are spending uh, as a percentage of their GDP, you know, 50% more than we are. 15.3% uh, of the United States' GDP is spent on health care, according to the World Health Statistics. We're at about 10.6% here in Canada. Uh, Americans spend 50% more of their GDP on health care than we do, and yet we live longer, our infant mortality rates are better, uh, we have less poverty. So what are Americans getting for all the extra money per capita they're spending on their health care system? Well, we're not getting better health statistics. You just recited them. So that's not, a, that's not an interesting uh, argument. Uh, I think if you ask what we are getting for the 50% more we spend is we have higher incomes for people in the medical care industry, all the way from insurance executives to malpractice lawyers to nurses, doctors, hospital administrators, and all the rest. The key point about comparing Canada to the United States is not simply that a very much larger share of our income goes to medical care, but rather that the difference is largely explained by the prices we pay for the services that we get. We don't get more hospital bed days per thousand. We don't get more office visits per capita. What we get is a bill for the same procedures that is about 40 to 50 percent higher. And that's why so many people in the United States are asking the question, are we getting reasonable value for the high prices we say? The only, the other thing I'd say, Steve, you give me a moment, would be to say this. I think it's misleading to evaluate either the American or the Canadian medical care system by reference to longevity or infant mortality alone. Mm -hmm. Medical care is a much more complicated set of goods and services than it is in life-saving or life-extending. And I think one of the things about the American health care debate that you miss if you take that perspective is the extent to which in Canada, because of its public financing of acute medical care, Canadians don't worry about being bankrupted by being ill or injured. Mm -hmm. Many Americans do, and it's not just the 45.n million who are uninsured at any one time, but a much, much bigger figure of the people who experience a period of non-insurance over any two-year time horizon. And that's in the area of 70 or 80 million Americans. And so if you just calculate that, over any two-year period, a quarter of the American population experiences an episode of non-insurance when their financial security can be devastated. That has nothing to do with longevity, but it has everything to do with economic security. And it's a dimension in which the United States is singularly suffering, and it's what, in part, Obama has been preoccupied with in thinking about extending some insurance to everybody.